Good evening, guys. How you doing? <laughs> yes, um, it's late at night. It's uh, approaching 11 p.m. <laughs> and with my little dogs. Yeah, I spoil them. <laughs> yeah, one of them wants me to pet him. Right, right now, let, let, let's just get him. Look at that. Look at that little peanut. <laughs> well. Well, let me, wow, what a day I had. I'm going to talk about different things. I hope I could be quick enough about it. Um, I'm being challenged again. And I see that when I go through challenges that it's really up to me how I make myself feel. I was getting pain in my chest, the center of my chest. More, more like a, you know, like a dull pain. It's all tension. And what's bothering me is this. Well, what's bothering me is revisited. Early, late last month, I get a call from, and it's the assistant DA, you know, district attorney. Uh, a year ago, I had witnessed a crime in a park and you know when you call you know I called 911 you know uh, what I did I would expect other people to do the same for me you know if they see me in trouble you know you call 911 you know it's a uh, uh, human to human you know you you know you want to help people out um, and you know when you dial 911 you know your name your your phone number is on record and I got a call nine months after the incident with um, the district attorney and I mean I had forgotten about the incident I mean I'm not going to go in and you know tell what happened but it's just something I, I witnessed and you know I called the uh, 911 and the person was able to get some help, and now it's a trial. Um, to to try to crunch him down, um, sometimes you have people who get very zealous, zealous, and they want to make a, a big name for themselves. And I trusted the DA, assistant DA, to give him the information of what I knew. And um, he, in short, wants me, he wants to subpoena me. And initially I thought it would be okay. But then, you know, one thing on this spirit journey, you, you start to, you know, you, your mind starts to think, hey, wait a minute, didn't he say that in this conversation? And, and you know, that some pieces don't make sense. So I said, you know, um, I, I, I won't uh, testify and in short what he said was that if I don't testify that uh, he'll just you know make a re recommendation and have me thrown in jail for a year I feel when you help someone it should be freely given you freely receive and you freely give you shouldn't have to um, be forced to testify, especially if you don't know the person, and especially if the culprit is still around and could hurt you. And people's information is all over social media, and they can track you down if they want to get you. And I shared my, my concerns, and he, he said to me, and I, I think this is what shocked me. He said, you know, after I told him valid reasons, you know, health reasons why I don't want to do it, he says that that's not his problem and that his job is to prosecute. I was stunned. And because of that, I feel resentful. And I feel enslaved. And I feel 
animosity towards this person. I've never met him. And I saw his profile on the internet. And I feel prejudice. I feel, I feel like a, a prejudice against him. And the pain in my chest was bugging me. You know, I went out with my dogs and everything to, you know, relax and unwind, but it was still there because I'm angry. And all my life, I felt like people are telling me what to do. Now, I'm, 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 a, very, I'm a very compliant person. But sometimes that's not enough and people just want to take advantage and at this point in my life I'm tired of it and so for him for, for me this man is a symbol of the things that I want to buck against you know I'm tired part of me says oh you know just just go with the flow and just testify, oh, uh, you know, trust God. But when I feel disrespected, that's the problem. When people don't respect you. And this individual, he, he's on the fast track. He's, I'm old enough to be his mother. He was a, a minor at the time of 9-11 with the Twin Towers falling. He was, a, he was a child. So he's just some young kid in my eyes. And he's only been in New York City for about maybe two years. He's on the fast track. And I feel with this case, why is he, you know, this, this, this case, why is this case so important to him? I feel that maybe this is his first case he wants to make a name for himself and win it at any cost. I mean, I help anybody who asks me to help. But people shouldn't be forced to do something and then not protect me. So, you know, I you know, was just taking a, 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 a nice bath and just relaxing. And then, you know, then I'm just going to bed now. And then my mind started drifting. I, I started just talking to the universe. And then I said something to myself. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it was this today when I was walking home. I met a man. He, we, were, he was going, we were going in opposite directions. And, and when we met up, you know, passing each other, he, he says, Oh, wow, you, you know, I like how you're walking and everything. And yeah, I think it was yesterday. And he said, you know, uh, I just came back from Puerto Rico and you know, the women there, they walk so nicely. Everybody says good morning, good afternoon. And they walk so beautifully, you know, down the street and everything and here watching you, you're doing the same thing. It's so nice, blah, blah, blah. So when I was just in, you know, when I'm in bed now, I was just thinking about that gentleman and I said, you know something? Walking, like the time when he saw me, I wasn't feeling good inside. I was thinking about that assistant district attorney. But I wanted to keep my chin up and in, despite how I feel, to at least walk like you're happy. So yeah, I'm just in bed now and I started thinking about that man you know, the, 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 the Puerto Rican fellow, the man who, you know, he went to, on vacation there. So I said, you know something? In life, you're always going to have people who are going to poo-poo on you. People who just crush you down when they can. But, you know, I have an option to, in spite of what's being done to me, to walk in dignity and in grace. You know, New York City, I live in New York City, and it's very, it's getting very harsh, very, very low energy here. But you know, we can do something. Let's do a, an experiment. Let's, you know, we are, like they used to say, your Sunday best, 
or let's say your Friday best, or whatever, just, you know, take a nice shower or bath, put perfume or cologne on, you know, be, be your personal best. Have nice clean clothes on, and then just walk outside with your head up high, like you're in paradise. And that despite your boss or your uh, significant other or whoever oppressing you, that they're not gonna tear you down in the inside because you can you always have the choice to walk in dignity and grace let's all New Yorkers or any other state who who sees this video do it for like even one week or even a day if you can't do it for a week one day to purposely get yourself dressed up and your heart talks to another person's heart of respect and love and you know I think that would turn the world around it starts with each individual person that one person can change the world let's try that whether you do it tomorrow you know just do it and you'll feel better about it let's do that despite how you feel Let's just display ourselves in a way that is pure and wholesome. And the enemy is going to hate it, but you're going to love yourself for it. So that's all that I have to say this evening, I, and I hope I made sense. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great, great weekend. Bye-bye, guys.